All right, welcome back. Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. Today we're going to be talking about TIPC. So on my channel, Adam Tan, I cover a lot of percussion stuff, including percussion technique, actually watching percussion stuff, but this time we're going to be talking about a percussion event, and it's one of the biggest ones in the world in 2023. The Taiwan International Percussion Convention. <laughs> TIPC 2023 is happening from the 19th to the 27th of May 2023. So that's a nine day event. Nine days is pretty big for percussion conventions. We don't really see percussion conventions go past four days. PASIC is only four days. Even Marimba Fest, the event that I run, only goes for a week. Nine days is a huge, huge deal. So I will be heading to Taiwan for TIPC this year. I'm really excited. I'm going for a few reasons. One of them is because it's a lot cheaper for me to go to Taiwan than it is to the United States. So it's kind of a no brainer for me to go if something this big is happening nearby. Secondly, the schedule for TIPC, which I'll talk about in a second, is quite relaxed in the sense that there are only events that happen at night time and the rest of the time it's basically free time from what I've heard. And that has also meant that I'm able to do some master classes. So I'm actually going to be doing a master class at the Taipei National University of the Arts on Monday the 22nd during TIPC week. And this is actually during the daytime so it kind of works out really well. By the way, if you live in Taiwan and you'd like to go to my master class, please come. But yeah, if you haven't watched any of my basic vlogs from last year, you can check them out over here. You'll see that I'm running on fumes the entire time. I had maybe like two, three hours of sleep each day. I drank a lot of coffee when I was in Indianapolis, even though I don't normally drink coffee. And even the previous two basics I went to in 2017 and 18, it was exactly the same because the schedule is so packed and because there's people everywhere. And it literally goes from like morning to very late at night, which is pretty taxing for a lot of people. By the second day of basic, I was kind of all percussioned out. <laughs> but this TIPC thing is nice, especially if you're new to Taiwan because you can actually go out and do touristy things, explore Taipei, which is a beautiful city, by the way, one of my favorite in the world. And then you come back and then you go and do some percussion stuff at night and it's just really cruisy. I like it. The third reason why I'm going to TIPC is because the artist lineup is absolutely stacked. Very well known artists on the program, which I'll go through later on in the schedule section of this video. But just to give you a hint, the 100 person marimba orchestra, yes, that's this one. <laughs> That is making a comeback in 2023, so I'm super excited. The fourth reason why I wanted to come to TIPC is because of the people. Everyone is so friendly. I met Ju Percussion at PASIC, if you haven't checked that video out over here. They were so friendly to me. They treated me like family, even though we'd never met before. And I'd heard of them before, and I've seen the videos everywhere because they're freaking amazing. But it wasn't just me also, they talked to everybody equally, they treated everyone so kindly, they would say to people, hey, you should come to Taiwan, you should come to Taiwan. And I agree because I've actually been to Taiwan multiple times, this will be like my fourth time, I think. But I'm sure if you go to TIPC, you will feel super welcome. Okay, what exactly is happening about TIPC? Let's go through the schedule together. So first you head to the concerts page, which is at the top, and then you're going to go to this big yellow thing over here. 2023, the 11th Taiwan International Percussion Convention. Stay true, embrace change. What an absolutely epic tagline. And then we'll just scroll down over here. You'll see there's a ticket reservation form. And if you click that link, it'll take you to a Word document that looks like this, and you can basically fill out which things you want to go to, uh, which we'll talk about later on. This event is actually like a bilingual event. It's both Chinese and English. Taiwan is, of course, predominantly a Chinese-speaking country, but everybody is pretty good at English also but they've just made it a little bit easier for international people to sign up by using this form where they're basically just going to help you get the tickets for you which is really great thank you for doing that due percussion you see that the schedule is divided into five different locations but you'll see that the bulk of the names are in the top section which is the national concert hall section just need to highlight that again because that triggered me. The National Concert Hall is like a massive concert hall in the heart of Taipei City. And as you can see here, we have a list of sessions and a list of performances. Having a look down here, we have May 19, 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. And the sessions are basically ticketed performances, exclusive performances that you get to watch. So let's have a look at the performance. Okay, first day, May 19th, 7.30 p.m. is Ju Percussion themselves. So if we look at Ju Percussion's program over here, wow, everyone looks super stylish. <laughs> it's amazing now that I can look at this photo and say that I've actually met most of the people in this picture, which is quite crazy considering that before PASIC I didn't know any of them. This program here, well, this is actually the same program they played at PASIC 2022 and I can tell you it was literally the best concert I've ever been to in my life. So the fact that they're doing it again, if you would like to see this performance, you get one more chance. So Beyond the Bend and Attraction 2 were both composed specifically for Ju Percussion, which is again, it's like the most subtle flex ever. <laughs> but yeah, these are really cool pieces, especially Solar Myth. Like literally, I would pay money just to see Solar Myth by itself. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, 
you'll see. If you haven't seen Solar Myth, there's a link to it in the description down below on the Jupercussions channel. That piece is crazy. It literally breaks the fourth wall. It is so crazy. You gotta see it. So May 20th, day two, at 2.30 p.m. we have Israel's Tremolo Ensemble. Let's have a look at their program. Uh, they don't have one yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be the first person to admit that I've never heard of Tremolo Ensemble before, but this is a very, very cute picture. <laughs> All just kind of like popping out of the goal. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna be doing, but that seems pretty interesting. After Tremolo Ensemble, we have these two Japanese players, Kanade Sato and Senri Kawaguchi. Uh, at 7.30 p.m. Now, if I remember correctly, yes, they are drum set players and that is just gonna be really cool. Again, remember a lot of percussion events, they kind of exclude drum set as kind of like the modern popular choice, but I'm really happy to see people who are really good at drum set. I just think it's really fun. Kanade is going to be playing a drum solo and then these, I don't really know any of these except maybe Spain. I'm guessing that's Chick Corea, Spain. Um, but if anyone knows any of these, let me know down in the comments below. That's going to be cool. And then the second half is Senri, who's going to be playing another seven pieces. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo, okay. I'm guessing they'll have a band or something, just like the drum set clinics that I saw at PASIC. So this is going to be really fun. Drum set. Drum set. Like, I wish I really could play drum set. I really suck at it. <laughs> May 21st, 2.30 p.m. So I think this is on Sunday, which is why there's no 7.30 p.m. It is Chen Chen Lu Jazz Sextet. So Chen Chen Lu is one of the best jazz vibe players I've ever seen. Chen Chen Lu does not have any program yet, but yeah, the Jazz Sextet looks sick. Like I'm literally gonna be like this the whole time because I love jazz vibe performances, especially when you got the entire band backing you. That is just so cool. Next up at May 22nd, 7.30 p.m. we have Quattro Beat. Ah, uh, yes, I've seen some videos of Quattro Beat before. So I think Quattro Beat is like one of those, what do you call it, like, not performance art, but they're kind of like a fun percussion group. I think they're like a group that does stuff that is kind of outside the classical percussion realm and more for like mainstream audiences, similar to like Stomp sort of vibe. So I think that would be really cool. It's nice to have something different once again, instead of just like serious classical percussion. And then May 23rd, we have the big names. Okay, this is two big names here. We've got Theodore Milkov and Lucid Duo. So, okay, so firstly, Theodore Milkov has the most goaded hands in the world when it comes to marimba. He does like the most craziest lateral passages in his pieces. And that's why, as we can see here, we have Scarlatti, <laughs> Scarlatti Spam. So Scarlatti, if you're not aware of Scarlatti, it's like those piano sonatas and stuff where the runs are like really classical type runs, but fast and would be quite difficult to play on marimba with two hands. But somehow Theodore's able to do it <laughs> and it looks really good and it sounds really clean. So very excited to see Theodore playing a program. I've never actually met Theodore in person. I've always looked at his videos and been like, whoa, your hands are literally like <laughs> And then after Theodore, we have Lucid Duo. So Lucid Duo, if you don't know Lucid Duo, it's Tomas Galinsky, who's a really well-known percussion composer at this point. He's also on Edition Switzer. Shout out to Edition Switzer. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people have played this piece Luminosity before. It's a really intense marimba solo. And then we've also got Irina Manolova from Bulgaria, who is the other half of Lucid Duo. And they just play like really cool stuff. Their recordings are really, really nice. I have never seen them play live before. I've never met either of them, but I think it'll be really interesting. Look at this program. It is stacked. It's absolutely stacked. So we've got Goldberg Variations. Anything with the word Goldberg and marimba is scary for me. <laughs> I'm not gonna guess which prelude that is, but I have a feeling I know which one it is. The Mirror 2 and Flow, I'm not familiar with these pieces, but it would be interesting to see. Piano Sonata in C sharp minor, Moonlight Sonata. This is, this is, I think, the famous part of Moonlight Sonata. Wow, this is gonna be on Marimba. Transcriptions. Transcriptions are so fun. Purity 2, I think that's one of Tomasa's pieces. Grand Vols, is that Chopin? I think it's Chopin. And then a Folk Dance, that would be really sick. So yeah, this is a really heavy, heavy program. And we get to watch this in a whole nine days of percussion. I'm really excited to see this day for sure. But the thing that I'm most excited about is on May 24th. May 24th at 7.30 p.m. we have Byron Muting, 100 person marimba orchestra. I don't think there's anything that you'll ever experience in real life that is like a 100 person marimba orchestra. That is literally going to be the biggest insurance claim ever. <laughs> They're playing a completely different program now from the looks of it. They've got, boom, uh, Bernstein's orchestral overtures. Now, uh, you have to excuse me, I'm not really an orchestral person, so I may not know some of these obvious references. We've got Carmen Sweet. Okay, I think I know what that is. Manana, composed by Lian Yawen. Okay, so that must be a new piece. Julie Spencer. Tribeca Sunflower, nice. Spring Riddle, composed by Qin Qin Li and Tank Sung. Rhapsody Espana, composed by Emmanuel Chabrier. 
arranged by Kosuke Yamashita. And then we got Steps, our anthem songs by Koji Sakurai. I don't know if you can tell how excited I am. I'm literally just gonna be like, like the entire time. If I could only pick one performance to go to, it'll be this one. After the 100 person member orchestra of madness, we have Daniel Yanka, is that how you pronounce that name? And Marta Klimasara. Now I've heard really good things about Marta Klimasara. Daniel is playing Cricket Tala. I'm not sure what that is. How sweet the thought of you as infinite. Sitting there part in ball is that piece that is uh, the one with the tape part that is basically, I say tape, like why do we even say tape nowadays? The electronic pre-recorded part <laughs> where there's like a bouncing ball sounds and then the player kind of like imitates a bouncing ball and there's all these like body movements. And Danimo. I don't know what Danimo is, but again, very interested to find out. So this program I'm guessing is more like contemporary style. And then we got Marta. Marta Klimasara with the... <laughs> oh, okay. Marta's program is basically like the best of album of flex pieces in percussion. Like pieces that you do to show people how virtuosic you are, how crazy you are at playing. This is it. We've got Ribbon A. Of course. Very interesting how Ribbon A and Ribbon B are actually separated, are actually bookending the program. I've never seen that before. Normally they're one after another. Reflections on the Nature of Water, Druckmann. Very classic choice. Okay, everybody loves a little bit of Druckmann. Corporel, Vinca Globacar, which is the piece where you basically slap yourself. It's a very, very difficult piece to play. I've seen many different renditions of it and yeah, it's hard. I Ching, <laughs> the difficulty just keeps going up and up and up. <laughs> Teaching is also an insanely difficult piece. Many different textures. There's a loud section, there's a soft section. It's just, there's so much that you can cover. Like I did the easiest movement of Iching and I found that difficult. And then finally finishing with Ribbon B. So this is gonna be an absolute knockout performance. If these are all played at like a really high level, it's gonna be unforgettable. And then on my birthday, May 26th. Yes, May 26th is my birthday. So basically this trip is a birthday present to myself. We have... Les percussions de Strasbourg. This is the original percussion group that a lot of people talk about. Well, one of the original percussion groups. And I remember telling my teacher Tim White about this group coming to Taiwan for TIBC, and he was basically like, <sighs> So let's have a look at what Les percussions de Strasbourg is playing. Yes. <laughs> Just looking at this picture, like you already know it's gonna be that kind of concert. But look at this program. Look at this program. <laughs> that is stacked. We have the Xenarchus special here. We have a full program of Xenarchus heavy hitters. The first one, Safa, very, very intense multi percussion solo. I'm guessing they either playing it solo or is there a sextet version of Safa? And then just like Marta, we have Ribbon A, Ribbon B again. <laughs> and then we have Oko, which is the Djembe trio. I've played it before. And finally, Pleiades with Clavier and Poe. So Clavier is, um, I don't even know if I've seen the Clavier movement before. And I've seen Poe, but I've never seen Clavier before. So so that's going to be really interesting. Wow, this is a very intense program. I mean, you didn't even need to put it into capital letters. <laughs> this is serious business. And yeah, Le Percussion de Strasbourg is one of the most famous groups in the world. So huge. You know, when I say stacked, I mean, this is properly stacked. And last but not least, we have from Japan on the 27th, Onde Koza. So Onde Koza is a, I think it's a taiko group based on what I can see in this picture. Yeah, it looks like one of those Japanese drumming groups, which will be really cool. And um, I can't read any of these, <laughs> but oh, I can read the last one. It's like big taiko. <laughs> But yeah, finishing off with something like on the coaster, something big, something loud, and something that is Japanese is just gonna be sick. So that's the program once again, 19 to 27. If you got a whole bunch of really awesome stacked lineups, it's gonna be great. Now, in terms of where the event actually is, once again, it's in Taipei City. So if I just zoom into Google Maps over here, my favorite website of all time. The National Concert Hall is over here, which is quite central. It's in Zhongzheng District, Zhongzheng Chu. So if you look for accommodation that is starting with Zhongzheng District, you will get a lot of recommendations in the neighboring hoods like Ximen, Dongmen, and then I think there's like an area down here also, and an area up here. And you can see these colored lines as well on the map. I think in Taiwan it's called Jieyun. Jieyun is like the subway. So yeah, I would say, say around the Zhongzheng district area, uh, you will find a lot of different hotels and Airbnbs. I'm gonna be staying in an Airbnb, and then I'm just gonna take the train into the National Concert Hall. So it's gonna be pretty straightforward. And in terms of things like transport from the airport, well, if I zoom out a little bit, the airport is like over here somewhere. Yeah, the airport's like over here. And then you can take this purple line, which is like the airport train in to Taipei main station, or you can take a taxi. Taxis are really cheap in Taiwan. So yeah, there's plenty of ways to get into the city. And as I said, during the day, there's no activity scheduled. So you can either meet up with people you've met at TIPC, or you can just have a, a fun time going shopping, going eating, like the food in Taiwan is 
STR. It is so good. And yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you've got any questions about TIPC. I'd love to help you. Otherwise, it's probably better that you message Jubicussion directly. But you can also follow Jubicussion Group on Instagram to find out more about TIPC. They're always posting updates about it. Let me know down in the comments below also if you are going to TIPC this year. I'd love to meet you and I'd love to see you there. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit different from my usual content, but I just love trying different things and this event is going to be a completely new thing for me so you and me together <laughs> if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads that i'm still uploading every single week thank you so much for watching today's video and i'll see you next week for another episode of the studio good night